Okay, so next we're gonna, uh, uh, I wanna start talking about, um, beginning to talk about uh, reframing our coast and, 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 the w and talk about how we think about our uh, general coastal zone. Um, so last couple years, the, the thing I asked you all the other day, the, qu the prompt I asked, I've been asking all my students that, and that was, you know, when you hear the coast, what, what, what comes to mind? What word or phrase comes to mind? And, in 20, and so this is a word cloud, and so the size of the word is proportional to uh, how, how frequently that was mentioned. So in 2018, beach was the most uh, referenced thing, and ocean was similar to, to beach. In 2021, it was much more evenly divided. There were people using a whole much, much more diverse uh, chunk of words. Um, uh, that was also probably because it was a smaller class, so that also gave, uh, it was a little bit harder to get uh, clear uh, winners and, and losers. And this is you guys. So you guys were similar to 2018, and that beach and ocean were, were the most common, uh, like single phrase or word. And then other things, home, waves, those other things were there, and then there's a, a more diversity of, of different phrases that were used, right? So that tells us that there are some clear there is some clear language when we, when we say a term like the coast that, that comes to mind. And that's uh, neither good nor bad, but it's just important to, to recognize that, right? And that's one of the things we'll be asking in our, um, in our survey of the general public. Um, so yes, beach, yes, ocean, that is totally the coast. But I want to make sure that we start this conversation by me drilling into you that the coast is much broader than those things, right? That's part of it. That's a very, you know, cool place and very visual thing. Um, but the coast is much broader. The coast includes this newly discovered octopus garden uh, off the Davidson Seamount up in the Monterey Bay area that was making all the news in the last uh, few days with this uh, about uh, two kilometers down, this massive concentration of octopus that are, um, you know, Get coming together and mating and, and reproducing and all that kind of stuff. The coast is also this grassland and these lupins, right? This is the coast. This is absolutely the coast, uh, this coastal uh, oak woodland grasslands. Uh, midwater, the midwater is, is absolutely, so this um, uh, Dumbo squid here uh, from deep, from lower uh, depths in the ocean. Uh, we'll learn, of, well, you'll, you guys will learn why this guy is red, or why he's sort of a brownish red color, part of the coast. This quinceanera is part of the coast, right? In this case, um, not just our cultural traditions, but the structures we've built around. In this case, this, um, this church is built out of coral, uh, coral um, uh, uh, calcium carbonate. So the physical thing was underwater and now is on land. And so all this stuff is part of the coast. So when we say the coast, we mean all of this stuff. When I asked you guys, which again, I've been asking students this for several years, in, in 2018, 78% uh, of our students that year were born in a, in a county touching the coast or, or right adjacent to the coast. And 100% of the people that year grew up high school, that kind of stuff uh, in proximity to the coast. Uh, 2020, it was still pretty high, 92% born and 96% grew up near the coast. Uh, 2021, it, we, we changed a, a fair amount in terms of our student population that year. 85% um, born at the coast, uh, about two thirds grew up near the coast. And this is you guys. So you guys are about three quarters um, born at the coast or, or near the coast. And um, 80, about 80% um, you know, high school, et cetera. So even though the numbers go up and down, we are, I mean, that makes sense that we're, our, our campus is at the coast, right? That we are obviously um, sampling, we're more likely to sample people that have a, a, an association with the coast than if we were in Kansas, you know, that kind of thing. So there we go. So you guys are all coastal. Even if, even if you weren't in Grub Coastal, you're here now, so you're all coastal. Um, uh, and the coast can be a dynamic place, a changing place. So this is uh, the former mayor of Los Angeles, uh, on a chunk of land, one of the agencies that I, that I um, am on the board of. Um, this is a chunk of the Los Angeles River in the Sepulveda Basin in, in the San Fernando Valley. And so this is, this is LA. This is LA, 
right? So this doesn't look like LA. This is the LA River. It doesn't look like the LA River. There's no Arnold Schwarzenegger isn't shooting some aliens with a shotgun in a in a you know post-apocalyptic wasteland, right? As as the LA River is mostly portrayed, it's cement block. Um, but uh, but this is what it could look like, right? In, in the small sections now that we have that we've not completely made a concrete channel, this is what it could look like. And when you're paddling on this area, it doesn't look like you're on the Colorado River, but it certainly doesn't look like you're in the middle of one of the largest urban places on the planet, right? And so one of the, the things that we are working at in some of the, the videos that I, I shared with you the other day and some other ones I'll share with you, for example, when I was just in Australia, People are working hard to try to bring that coastal idea, that, that coastal functioning farther inland into these coastal waterways for both recreation, for health, for environmental justice reasons, for economic development reasons, for all these, all these, um, all these things. So this is, this is the coast. As we mentioned before, the threats are always there. So it's not just, the coast isn't just cool things like we've been talking about, it is also challenges. So in this case, this is, what's going on right now in uh, Fukushima, Japan. And this is TEPCO, the, the Japanese electric power uh, company. Um, when we had the tsunami, the earthquake that led to the tsunami that led to the inundation of the nuclear power plant, which led to the meltdown of the power plant. Um, uh, we've built up all this water and they are in the process of releasing um, over a million tons of this accumulated radioactive water into the coastal waters there. So this is, a, this is an ongoing challenge. We always have these challenges and we always will because we humans are concentrated in this area. In general, oh, composite and confused. I don't know why I have that up there. But um, in general, the main question we're going to return to over and over again in our class is has the coastal zone become too complex to manage? So are there too many people? Are there too many moneyed interests? Are there too many, too much climate change, too much all this kind of stuff for us to really effectively manage it? Manage it or can we effectively manage it, right? Can we get, actually get our arms around this place that sometimes seems very daunting and very complex? So we're gonna keep returning to that. To start with though, we are gonna break up into some small groups and I'm gonna ask you guys, we're gonna break up into groups of three people and I've, and I've assigned people groups, I'll show you in a second. Um, but the first thing we're gonna do is break off and you guys are gonna, we're gonna spend a few minutes brainstorming in your, in your little small groups here um, about the biggest coastal problems, right? So, the, so after this, we'll talk about the coolest things, the best things about the coast. But first I wanna talk about what you all think are the greatest challenges or the biggest challenges that we face. Cool, yeah. That the, sorry, so the biggest, face, the biggest challenge is facing the coast overall. Yeah, so not, I mean, it could be you, but we mean from a management perspective of, of this region of the planet, this broad region of the planet. What do you see as the biggest um, obstacles or challenges? Okay, cool. And so, um, so we're going to brainstorm for a few minutes. You guys are going to type into the sheet I'll share with you. And then we're going to discuss them, and then we're going to vote on them. And so we're just going to, it's going to be a little small group activity. Okay, so what small group, what's the small group? Okay, so now, now, so keep talking our groups. We're going to keep talking about this, but I want you guys to now look at, and I can put it up here, I guess, to make it easier, but, but you guys should do it on your own. I want you guys to look through these things, right? I want you to glance through these things, and in a, in a, in a couple minutes, we're going to vote. Okay, let's take, uh, get, get your last votes in, and let's take a look at what's going on here. Last votes in, last votes in. All right, drum roll, you guys, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Uh, oh, what am I doing here? I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Okay, so it looks like, looks like uh, five, what's this, biodiversity? So you guys like biodiversity, and uh, close on the heels is culture, and uh, what's that? Oh, and, and, and benef benefits, like ecosystem services and economic benefits, super cool. I love it, I love it, I love it. And somebody speak to, somebody that voted for biodiversity, tell me why that one is so, why, why your group thought that was so cool. And that just views that. Um, uh, totally. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, I, I, 
used to work in Antarctica. I just got back from the Great Barrier Reef. They're all super cool. But my favorite place in the world to get in the water is actually right here in Southern California. And, and that, that's, I'm not, well, I guess I'm biased, but, but it's, it's a total different feel than all the other places in the ocean. It feels like you're inside something, whereas coral reefs are, I think, coral reefs are beautiful and they're super cool and important. But to me, when I look at coral reef, it looks kind of rigid. You know, the rock, it's, it, you know, it's rocky structures for the most part. Whereas when we're in our kelp forest, I really enjoy feeling like I'm inside of something living. Is our coast like the most productive ecosystem in the world? Uh, uh, as far as natural ecosystems, if you talk about biomass produced, yeah. kelp forests are the most productive on the planet in terms of carbon fixation. The only system that produces more carbon per square meter is an artificial system, and that's either corn or sugar cane because of all the, imp all the uh, fertilizer inputs and stuff. So, so there's, more, there's more carbon fixed, more, 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 more tissue laid down in those uh, uh, agricultural systems. But naturally speaking, um, yeah, kelp beds are fantastically productive, insanely productive. Um, yes, more on that uh, in a few weeks, but that's a good question. Okay. Thanks for that. I will go through this and I'll show, I'll pull together the results and in our next class I'll, I'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this when I have a chance to go through it. But thanks for that. I appreciate your input. Everybody plop back down. We're going to finish up with this last little activity here, last little section here.